and welcome to the first episode of Comadreando Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. Today we have some amazing guests, my personal comadres, Maria and Zuli. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Who are you? Hello, I am Mari. I am co-host of El Salon Chronicles and Comadre to Marcy. Hello, everyone. I'm Suli, and I'm also a co-host at El Salon Chronicles, and I'm here comadreando with Marcy. <laughs> so I feel like you should have like a little song, comadreando. <laughs> yeah, we should we should whip out the maraca. Uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so today's topic is introducing something that is a little controversial. Um, we're going to be talking about relish, religion, not religion, religion, and how we introduce that to children, especially children with well, special if needs. If you're Latina, religion. If you're Latina, it's religion. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to give a little bit of background. The reason why the topic came up is because I was having a conversation with my mother and she actually asked me when I was going to put my child in catechism classes. And my answer to her was, I just kind of stood silent and um, I was just going back and thinking like, how would I explain the concepts of religion to my child, who's a very literal person. So, you know, and I'm not the only one. I was doing some research and I found that a lot of people have hesitance, especially parents of children with special needs of becoming part of a religious community because of their kid's diagnosis. They felt they might be excluded um, or they felt that, you know, they're gonna be rejected by the people of the church or the clergy. So we wanted to get into that. And I want to first start off the conversation by asking, what is your experience with religion? Like, what religion were you raised in? And as you grew up, how did that evolve or change? Okay. Well, um, Zuli, you want to go first? Or you want? No, go ahead. I don't know. Go ahead. Um, okay. So I am agnostic now as uh, an adult, but I was raised in a typical Dominican household. Uh, and so we were Catholic. I was baptized, I did my communion, and I think that's where it fell off for me. Thankfully, my mother was, uh, you know, she was religious, but she didn't um, keep us from exploring or asking questions. And when she did not have the answer to the questions, she allowed us to explore it on our own. Um, I don't know if it was just progressive of her or is that she had five kids and she was too busy. So I, on my own, decided at a very young age, and I think this was based on the fact that I had a lot of childhood trauma with sex abuse. And so um, I, I had fear that I was gonna burn in hell forever. So the whole fear mongering really took a toll on my, on my self-worth and my mental health as a child. Although I didn't know it at the time, but the fact that I thought there was the, you know, the blonde blue eyed guy in the, in the sky that was watching every moment. Like even when I went to the bathroom and he knew the things that were happening and somehow I thought I was responsible and I was evil. And so I was going to burn perpetually, like never ending. Like that had an impact. Like that kept me from sleeping, gave me nightmares. Like the idea of just burning forever. So as a little girl, I wanted to find a way and I wanted to find maybe a religion that told me I wouldn't be burning forever. It is so scary. So yeah. And so I explored as a child. Uh, I went to the Adventist church. I went to the um, Christian church, the evangelical church. And as a teenager, I almost got baptized in the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. And as a young mother, I became a member of the Pentecostal church. I married the son of a pastor. And... I was deep into religion and my children were being brought up uh, Pentecostal at the time. 
And then I've always been someone that questions and reads and asks, you know, asks questions like I go to the source. And so my mother-in-law, she was so gracious. She would answer the questions to her best ability. And I just started seeing discrepancies between what the church, you know, was preaching and what actually was the truth. And I think the catalyst for me was watching a documentary called Zeitgeist. And that made so much more sense for me. It kind of explained things and it was like an awakening for me. So I decided, you know what? I don't know enough to determine that this is the right religion or that is the right religion or that religion itself is correct. So I'm going to fall back and see how things unfold and I will not impose any of it on my children. I will allow them to find their faith, how they want to find it. I will guide them to my best ability, but I don't, I don't care for them to be part of organized religion. So that's, that's really where I am right now. And I have very strong feelings about the Catholic church specifically, but I guess we'll get into that later. Thank you, Mari. It's a lot, but it's true. And I think, no, but I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, how you feel, Mari, like we grow up in a religion um, because our parents not so much impose it on us. Cause sometimes it's just what they know. Um, but some parents do. Some parents are like, you have to be Catholic or whatever religion they are. Um, so it's kind of hard for them to to stray from that. But once you get older, you kind of realize and you find your own path, your own religious path, uh, you know. But for me, um, so I grew up in a religious home in the sense that my mom, my dad. <laughs> okay, so let's start with my dad. My dad is completely <clears throat> against the Catholic religion. He believes in God. But he has always, I remember since I was little, he would he was always saying the Catholic Church, they're a bunch of rapists, the nuns are they abuse, the nuns are mean. He went to a Catholic church in Dominican Republic. And there the kids, the, the nuns were they were allowed to whip the kids, hit the kids, punish the kids, be, you know, because it was a nun, right? So the parents would allow, and it wasn't even that the parents allowed, it was just that there was no question. You know, the, the nuns and the priests would do whatever they wanted. Um, I don't know if anything else happened. All I know is that um, he would not allow priests to come to my house. He was like, no, I will not have that. Like, he was always, like, you know, very against the Catholic religion. Um, and he used to say he was an atheist. One time, uh, this is a little story, um, those uh, elders from saints uh from what i think they call them elders the mormons? the mormons yeah but i think they call them like brothers or elders or whatever they come yeah. they come with their little Elder. they come with their little suits and stuff and they came knocking on the door and my father was like oh sure come in come in sit down <laughs> let's talk religion and he went into some and my father is my father's so smart that he comes off as being crazy and he may may have a couple of loose screws, but my father is like it's incredible how smart this man is. Like he's like you sit and have conversations with him, in depth conversation, and you're like, how do you know this? Um, so he sat there, and I've never heard about this religion. And he sat there, and he was like, yeah, so you guys do this, and the, and the guys were looking at him. And he, they were like, no, we we don't do that. And he was like, oh yes, why don't you next time you come and visit me, why don't you bring a history? of your church. And I will tell you what's in there. And I'm not going to have the book. I'm just going to tell you what's in there. And you tell me if I'm right or wrong. And those kids were like petrified. Yeah, that's a they were, Damn, I like your they were, that's a savage. <laughs> they were fucking scared. They were like scared. and But they came back, right? Because the whole point is that they're supposed to Ch I challenge you and they came back and they came back a few other times and then after a while my father was just like no we don't see eye to eye we don't you know whatever and they went their way and they never came back but that's my father he'll challenge he'll challenge the church or any religion so um my mom is not my mom is very much like Maddie's mom she wasn't the one like if we didn't want to go to church um as we got older then she would 
she wouldn't force us. But when we were younger, we did have to do our sacraments. So I did, you know, I was baptized, first communion and confirmation. I did do those three sacraments. And, um, and I went to Catholic church, I mean, Catholic school. And I liked Catholic school because I'm a person that I am very, uh, I like, uh, uniform. Uh, I like, you know, I like things to be structured. And so, um, because I like that, I enjoyed being in Catholic school. I enjoy the fact that I had a uniform. I enjoy that there was a system and, you know, everything. I, I like that. I, I don't know why I'm so militant, but I like that. And, um, but the other part that I didn't like was the fact that when we went to, uh, like they had like these little, uh, it wasn't catechism, but something like catechism, like you would go in the afternoons and you would talk about the Bible and I would ask questions. They would tell me, no, you're, you, you're not, you're supposed to fear God. You're supposed to not ask questions. It is what it is, you know? And, and that part I did not enjoy about the Catholic church. And, and then as I got older, I started learning more and more and more about it. Um, and I just did not enjoy, like, it was just like, the more I found out about the Catholic church, the more I was just like, why do we sit here and we worship these priests that rape uh, little kids, take advantage of little kids, um, that are probably raping nuns because we don't hear about that, but there was, you know, there, that was a huge thing. Uh, I don't know if it's still happening now, but, um, that was a huge thing. Wait, Zuli, can I interject? So yes. part of the history of the Catholic church, the nunnery, the nuns, right. yes, they were there to pray supposedly, but I read in a couple of um, history articles that the nuns were there to satisfy the priest's needs, but this was not advertised. Uh, listen, I would not be surprised if that was the case, but there was a lot of nuns that did become pregnant from priests and these children were taken away. And I mean, and if we want to go deeper and deeper into history, it was even said that a lot of these babies were sacrificed. Um, don't know how true that is, but you hear these stories, you know, and I'm pretty sure that if we go into a rabbit hole of the the religion from way back when, we're going to find some things that we're going to be like, what the fuck was happening? And this is the church that we worship. And I mean, and the Catholic church is very political. It's so political that they mention it in our, in our capital, it's mentioned, you know, when they, when they're bringing out new laws. And I mean, right now with the whole Texas situation with the, uh, uh, the abortion that's based on religion. Why is religion and, and politics in it, why, why, especially Catholic religion? Why is that even something that should be a part of our government? No, that should not, it shouldn't be. You're yeah, we're veering into like the topic of church, the separation of church and state. Right. That's something that that's a really good topic also. But right. That's like a whole. I, I, I agree. You know, and, I'm, and I don't understand that. Like, um, you know, when a lot of parents were uh, protesting against when kids go to school and they say uh, and they're saying the, the national anthem that they wanted the to pledge remove, of allegiance. Right. When they do the pledge of allegiance and they wanted to remove uh, the part about God, a lot of parents were up in arms. But it's like mm, you can't. I get it because not everyone has the same beliefs. You know, it's not for I don't know. It's just like when you when you try to bring religion into something that really doesn't necessarily need the religion. I, I just don't see why we try to impose that on people. But anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sidebar. Um, no, no, no. The it, United States is the only country that makes people pledge yeah. allegiance to the flag. It, it's yes. I was, I was just about to say the same it's thing. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. You know, it's like, but we're the land of the free and which in many things, we may have more leniency than other countries, or we may accept things more than other countries. But when you really look at it, are we really? No, we, there's a part of this country that does have some control over the people. Um, so, you know, getting back on track, um, in 2019, I took a trip to uh, Portugal and I went to Lisbon and within my trip, um, I learned a lot. There's a lot of history in that, in that country. And within that trip, I ended up going to this, uh, it was like a monastery and the monastery, um, was very interesting. It had a lot of statues and these statues looked like gargoyles or like, they look evil. 
and you saw the the penta the pentagram it, the pentagram was everywhere everywhere you look you saw the pentagram and i was just like wait was this a monastery and 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 the, the tour guide was like yes and and so i asked him it's very important to have a guide because you learn a little bit more uh, about what's going on so we had a little personal guide and i asked him and and i was like wait isn't that a little demonic and he was like well let me tell you. And he went into the whole history and they used to do sacrifices. So there's this uh, temple that when you go in, the temple goes down. It goes nine stories down, nine stories down to the Dante's Inferno. And when you go, what? yes, it's in, look it up, look it up. It's in there. That was a movie. That was a movie. I know that That's was a, a movie. Book. There's a book. <laughs> there's a book. So the, the, the 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 little temple it, it goes in the form of a circle so you go down the steps in a circle and as you go down in the middle of the circle there is a pentagram and the monks would go in circles they would sit there and they would chant and they would do sacrifices all in the name of god or in the name of religion and this is what this monastery was and it, it's it's very i mean if you travel and you go to Portugal, I will tell you to go here and visit because it's very interesting. So what happened was now I'm doing my research and I'm reading and I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, this is insane. I mean, there was a, a little house that we passed on our way there and it was a woman who was very holistic and she believed in curing people with natural resources, right? She would make, um, she would bless the water and she would give it to people that were sick and the people would then feel better. And so the Catholic Church caught wind of this and they went to her home and they were like, you no, you can't be practicing witchcraft. We'll have none of this. And they ended up burning her. They ended up burning her. I mean, while the whole village watched because that was a thing back in the days. I, I don't understand how morbid people were. Um, but the people watched her get burned. Um, sure enough. Uh, I think as I was reading, I was doing my little research, kind of refreshing my memory from the trip. She ended up becoming, they ended up blessing her, making her um, a saint. Because they ended up finding out that she was, in, in fact, not a witch. She was a very religious person and not so many people believed in her. Um, I thought I had written down her name. But I guess I didn't. But, um... But yes, um, I thought I had written out her name, but I didn't. But anyway, she ended up becoming a, a saint. And now when you go to that little village where her home is, if you bring, and I brought back water from there. If you bring back the water, it is said to be the water of youth. So you stay young, oh, you boy. stay healthy and all that. And of course, I wasn't going to pass the opportunities. I was like, I bet I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm bringing me a cup back. Um, but anyways, going back into the whole history of it, um, just learning that part. And that's, that's you know, ancient religions history that I was learning there in Portugal. And to know that from that time, that's what they did. And that's what the Catholic religion was all about. Them doing sacrifices, chanting, praying to something they call God, which wasn't really God. Because if you're doing sacrifices, I'm sorry, that's nowhere in the book. And if it is, please point it out to me. Um, doing sacrifices and all that. I was just like, eh, yeah, no, I don't know. What is this thing we're worshiping here? Um, but I'm, I don't want to part, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of it. If you look at the sacraments, when you go and, um, take communion, that's symbolic sacrifice. Cause you're taking of the body and the blood of Christ. Right. So I guess to make it more PC, they turned it into that. So I want to kind of, um, talk about my experience with religion. So I was like the kid that was like, Waking up Sunday mornings, I did all my sacraments, waking up Sunday mornings, going to church, um, having to sit there for an hour, you know, just like very serious. And I had to be paying attention. God forbid I was like not I hated focused. It. God forbid I, I was not focused because I would get the look of death. It'd be like. Right. And I'd be like. And then my brother, he was so bad. He would like make like we wouldn't be we would be completely zoned out during church and then at the end when they do the announcements everybody's clapping he would do this enthusiastic clap like hey! he didn't know what they were clapping about so then i would look at him and i'm like dying my mother's like 
vas, tú eres un hereje, vas al infierno. That, and then I had, um, my other family was like religious too from that side. So we would go visit and um, my, uh, my aunt's husband had a sister who was a charismatica. So she would do those prayer groups, like those intense prayer groups, which is great. Mm. I love praying. Like, it's great to pray. But then she would read from the, the revelations, stuff of nightmares. Like, there's going to be some people on horses and you're going to go to hell and everybody's going to die. Right. And people are going to come back from the dead. And I'm just like, whoa, this sounds like a scary movie. So I'm um, going from that, you know, and then. You know, I was still going to church and everything. I, my mom would actually make me feel guilty. Not like your mom. Like, she'd be like, Tú tienes que ir a la iglesia, Marcia. And then um, <laughs> I would... They, they use your whole yeah, name, too. Marcia, like, they try to you. <laughs> so um, then September 11 happened, and, and people were condemning the um, Islamic religion for the act of the extremists. And um, I started questioning that. I'm like, you kids. I mean, I knew Muslim people. I was going to college at the time. It was like my first right. year at Pace. I was going to college and I knew Muslim people. And I was like, these don't seem like the people that would go ahead and like, you know, make some extreme act and, and hurt people. Right. Um, so I started researching. I started reading the Quran. I started reading about Christianity. Uh, I was like, definitely gonna be, not going to be Catholic anymore. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that's wrong with the church. At that time, there was a, a lot of um, controversies regarding uh, finding out about child abuse by the church and all these other things going on. Right. Um, you know, I, I started researching Buddhism and reading up on, on Wiccan, the, like naturalistic pagan religions. So I was just kind of like, at the end of my search, I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I do believe there's a higher power because I've experienced some things, but I don't really feel like organized religion is the way to go. I mean, I did baptize right. my kid when he was born, but um, besides that, um, that's the extent of it. I mean, I'm teaching him goodness for goodness sake, not for this, not for the fact that if you right. do something bad, some stranger is looking at you in the sky and then he's going to send you to hell and you're going to burn right. for eternity. Yeah, that's like perpetuating like uh, like emotional and, and psychological I know. abuse on your own children. Absolutely. Like I, I don't understand and I'm sorry to to interrupt you because I'm like so like like I'm I'm trying to but it's like to me it's like it blows my mind as a parent mm -hmm. to like say these things to children. I would not say it to my children because I remember what it did to me as a child. Right. And it kept me from saying a lot of things because it's like, all right, God already knows because he saw it, but I don't want my mother to know too. And mm -hmm. I don't, you know, and that made, that made me pray. And I'm like, pray as in like for predators, not pray. Right. You know? So to me, it's like, you know, thank God that my mom didn't make me have to go, you know, be a part, you know, like the monaguillos in the church and stuff mm -hmm. like that. My mom was too busy for all of that. But I think of the children that did like during, you know, I'm older than you, Marcy. So, you know, back then we didn't have like the information that we have now. Right. We didn't have access to information. We didn't have Google. That's how old I am. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we could research. Like we had to have. We weren't. Like, there wasn't a search bar. <laughs> yeah. No. It it I, had, like, I went to the library to do this research, Miss. But no, I went to the library to look at all these books. I didn't have any Google tampoco. I had just gotten a computer y no estaba así como está ahora, okay? Yeah. But it wasn't as easy accessible as it no, is no, now. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah. Um, so it was like you couldn't question. And when you did, like my mom, like I knew that I would like throw her off because here's here's an interesting thing. And, and you know, I think Zuli and I have this in common where my father, my, I've never seen my father in church. My father no, no. will not set foot in a mm. church. I don't know why I've never asked. And now you just sparked something. Maybe, maybe the church is going to go up in flames. As he walks I think he's going to go know. in flames. My father will probably like, evaporate. <laughs> but I, but I remember that my father had this book, and we were talking about it because I've always like I've always had these like in depth conversations with my dad, and my dad was talking to me as a child about artificial insemination. And he was like, what if Virgin Mary, Dike Virgin, was artificially inseminated? What if, you know, uh, aliens came and they were experimenting and they artificially inseminated her? 
and she then became pregnant, had this child, and you know, uh, 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 Jose, Joseph was like, no es mío, pero, you know, me voy a ser responsable, pero, you know, and then this is Jesus, the first peach tree child, because, you know, of, and my mother was so angry at him right. for saying this shit to me, because you know what, I, I, I used to go to charm school, and, um, and, you know, and we had to, we had this, um, um, class about how to interview and how to speak publicly. And I remember that when I, you know, I walk up on stage and I sit down and they ask me, so what are your thoughts on religion? And I regurgitated everything my father <laughs> said. My, my mom was, tr my mom was trying to be like, you know, like, like, um, Homer Simpson in the bush. Yeah. He was trying to be like, this is not, I didn't say that to her. This is not my daughter, you know? So, um, like Zuli, you know, like, it, it, you know, at least we had yeah. parents that, you know, kind of made us. And I think, and I think that that's why it really wasn't enforced because I had two parents that had different, uh, views on it and they were literally from drastic ends. Like my mom was like religious and my dad was just like, uh -uh, ain't having nothing with it. Don't want it in my life. Nothing. But my mother's very open. My mother's not the type of religious woman that she's like, no. Nah. Taki, you know, like sometimes she'll say something and I'm like, mom, no, let's sit and let's, let's talk about this. And she will, and she'll listen and she'll say, you know what? Well, okay. I, I, I understand that. And, and then she'll like say something like, bueno, si, en este entonces había eso. Ay, eso puede ser verdad. You know, like she'll, she'll, she'll actually be receptive to what I'm telling her. Um, She's not like some parents that they're like, absolutely not. You will not use God's name in vain. You will not speak ill of this religion. No, no. My parents are not like that at all. They're very modern when it comes to that. Papi was, he was always so questioning person. Like I, I, we've had this conversation before. He's like researching Karl Marx and read the communist manifesto. I wanted to go fight in Cuba and all this stuff. But with that, and he was like a studied man and he used to love to read with that, though, he was raised by his grandmother, and his grandmother was heavy religious. So I remember for, um, so I'm just remembering this now, for Semana Santa, you know, for Pal, Pal Viene Santo, he would wake up mute, and he wouldn't speak until he took a shower to anybody. And my chatty, but I would wake up like, hey, dad, good morning, how are you doing today? I'm like, why are you not talking to me? And he's like, and I'm like, okay. So, you know, he grew up with all these things, but like, even then, like, I feel like when he got sick with cancer, like we went back to like, started starting going to church again. Like we always went to church, but it was like more heavy. Like we would go like twice a week and then we would have the, the charismatic ladies come and pray over him in the, in the house. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting, like how we grew up and even though we're off, we are from the same country, how people have di um, differing views. Um, Mari already said a little bit how she felt about bringing their, her children into religion and why. And then Suli, I wanted you to maybe tell us how you have, how did you introduce religion to Dalen? So um, I sort of just did it. It came naturally because that's the, you know, Catholic religion was the religion that I grew up in. So um, my mother... <laughs> And many other family members were always like, you have to baptize him. You have to baptize him. And I just didn't quite understand the whole point of baptizing someone and then finding a godparent. So I'm a psycho mom and I don't think anyone will parent my child the way that I do. So if I die, I may take him with me or... <laughs> Because I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't think you'll do well with anyone here. That's how psychotic I am with my child. Or um, I just, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't understand that. So it took me a really long time to baptize my son. So he was 11 when I baptized him. And I got so much shit for that. And I would tell my mom, like, mom, Jesus was 33 when he was baptized. Please relax. Like, and she was just like, no, you know, cause they tell you if you don't baptize your child before he knows natural sin, then it's like, he's living in sin. And if he dies, he's going straight to purgatory. And I was just like, for the love of God, are you fucking kidding me? What is it they like, say in Spanish? Que son, estaba moro el niño. 
Yeah, and it's just like, are you fucking oh kidding me? Oh my god, me? I haven't heard that in so long. Yeah, tamoro. Tamoro. You know. Not lo, creo. <laughs> you know, so I didn't, yeah, I didn't understand that. And I was just like, that is insane to me. Insane to me. So I did it mostly because, one, I wanted people to get off my back. And two, because a part of me felt like if something happens to my child, you know, is he, you know, going straight to purgatory, right? Because still in the back of your head, you're still think thinking these things. So I went and I had him baptized and they did a rush baptism, okay? Because he was 11 years old. The church was frowning upon me like, how dare you? We have to expedite this. He can't be walking around one more second without being baptized. So I had to find a godmother and a godfather in a day because they literally called me and they were like, we're baptizing your son tomorrow. I was like, what? You know, and usually when they're that old, they make them do classes. And they were like, no, no. At this point in his life, he should be doing his first communion. So we're going to expedite it. We're having first communion. We're doing uh, baptism tomorrow. Uh, you, I, I had to run, get him a little outfit. I had to call people up. Hey, you want to be the godmother? There was no thought process into any of this. I was just like, we have to do this. They're expediting it. So that goes to show how how real is it? You know what I mean? It's, it's fucking BS when you get to the bottom of it. So, of course... I get a little envelope. I have to put money in there for the church. Okay? Exactly. I have to put money. So we go. We get him baptized. We do something quick. Done. Then they started. he started to do uh, the classes for First Communion. And they also expedited that. They were like, he's going to do the rapid class. So he's not going to do the, the... I think you have to do it for two years or something. They were like, no. We're going to do it in three weeks. In three weeks, he's going to, and I'm just like, well, he's using the same little outfit he got baptized in to, to do his first communion. So, um, so that was also done rapidly. Within that, my son was asking me questions. And I was truthful in the answers because kids nowadays, they're not like us. They have everything at, the, at their fingertips. So he would hear from friends and he would, you know, look it up. So he would ask me valid questions mom i read that there was you know priests do this and priests do that and that the religion is this and the religion is that and what was i going to say no that's false i'm not going to do that so i you know i told him yeah that's real it's true it happens he was like i don't want to be a part of that he goes as a matter of fact i don't want to be a part of any organized religion none i don't want to do anything I don't, be I believe in a higher power and that is it. And I respected that. So I never imposed it in him in the sense that I was like, no, that's what you have to do. I showed him the Catholic religion because that's what I was brought up in. And I let it be his choice whether or not he wanted to continue worshiping, you know, that religion or any religion. So, I mean, the other day I told him to pray and he was like, I will not pray to the Catholic religion. I was like, okay, so no. You can pray, you can pray um, to anything you believe in, or you can pray for clarity. You don't, ha you don't have to pray to, to a religion. You pray to a higher power, to, to sense of clarity. You can pray just for yourself, you know, just, just for you. And he was like, oh, okay. So I think he's still, you know, figuring that part out, but I don't impose it on him now. So when Aiden was still small before he got diagnosed. We used to go to church. Now, I'm not going to tell you every Sunday where we went. Once he started the onset of autism, like he was quiet for a while. I, I think I spoke about this before. You know, he lost the 25 words. He was quiet for a while. Then we started going to church while he was getting therapy. So Aiden's the type of kid. He's like scripting all the time. Um, so the looks that I would get, not necessarily from the clergy, because, you know, Catholic church is humongous. I used to sit in the back just in case... He was passed out and we would have to leave. Um, but the looks that I would get from other people in the church, like, like I'm being a bad mom because my kid is scripting and like, talking. Like, how dare you? How like, dare you? your child like, is talking. Right, right. How dare you bring this child that, to the that, church? That's that's what I I find that although religion preaches so much compassion mm -hmm. there I I don't know I, I and this is just my experience they're the 
group of people with the least compassion, the most judgmental. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I felt, I've felt the most judged by them. People that claim, claim to be, you know, oh, you know, so devout, devout right. Christians, devout Catholics. Ellos son los primeros que comienzan, tú supiste de fulanita, oh, no, mira la otra. I cannot stand the hypocrisy. Y no tanto yeah. eso, that's the dichotomy of religion, right? You pray that there's a God of love, which I believe that love is like the key of everything. That is the that is the essence of humanity, right? But then you're creating division among people. Right. Even within the Christian religion, we talked about a few sects of the Christian religion, but there's multiple. There's so many. Oh, absolutely. And then even in that, right? They're talking about oh, save the save the um unborn children, right? No abortion, that's the sin. You're killing people, but you're going to other countries. You're destabilizing destabilizing communities and 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 countries and you're killing people. You're putting kids in cages. But that's okay. But then killing an a a a a, a newborn, not a newborn, a, a a embryo, an unborn child is not okay. So that is that the the hypocrisy is insane. And then like even like even um we stopped going to the church in, in Manhattan because I found that that was like another thing because there was a church, there was actually a priest there that um, came out on the news. Um, so we came to church here in Jersey. And even then, they had a separate room for me to be with my child. So I couldn't be with the rest of the congregation. Wait, what? That That's just... They have a room in the back of the church for kids that talk or people that can't be with everybody. Okay? So... Peace and love, but not you. You can get out of here. That's insane to me. So in, so instead of accepting and, and teaching the whole congregation, you know, maybe educating the congregation and, and showing humanity uh, patience and, and, you know, understanding, let's just fucking isolate. Mm-hmm. Right. So you don't disturb what we're trying to do over here. Right. F- oh, my God, Marcy. Uh, and, that upsets me so much. And here's, here's the thing. Um there are some priests that do it for the right reason, right? Mm-hmm. Just there are some, because I, I had to go to church with my son and cause I paid more attention as an adult, obviously than I did as a child. Um, so there was some priests that when mothers used to go with their crying babies or with the kids that can sit still or whatever, there was this one priest one day that um, people kept looking and shushing and the priest stopped the whole mass. And he was just, no, we're not going to do that. Absolutely not. We are not going to sit here and shush. And t- that is a child. And that child is welcome here just like everyone else. I will speak louder if I have to. And he, you know what he did? He moved to the middle of all the pews so that way everyone could hear him equally. Because he was like, we are not going to do that. And I was like, wow, that's probably the first time ever that I've seen a priest do that. Because there's been other cases where there's been priests that have literally told parents, you have to go. Or I'm not going to continue mass. You have to go. And next time you come, please don't bring your child that you cannot control. Okay? So, and then you have those priests. So. Well, I I, I feel like, you know, the authority and the power Mm -hmm. that culture has enabled priests to have. Right. Is the reason why this has all happened. Mm -hmm. Because I am sure you know, despite the fact that I have like strong feelings about the church, I'm sure that not everybody's bad. Right. There, I'm sure there are some amazing priests that do so much for the community. Las Monjitas. You know, my mom is a good person. Right. She's a devout church goer. Right. Like my you mom. Know, there are a lot of good mm-hmm. people, but then there are those that, you know, that take this power and leverage it against their, you know, they, they use it because right. of the, you know, blind faith and do not question. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, you know, as far as like, well, like what we were talking about in the, in our, in our head, in our WhatsApp headquarters, we were talking about, you know, the, the, you know, sex abuse scandal in the Catholic church. I mean, all they do is move the priest to another place. Yeah. Like Marcy, like to me, like, that's the reason why, like, I guess, you know, like I have, I have so many questions, but like, I don't. Because I don't understand. So I guess you're the f- best person to ask. But like bringing Aiden to Sunday school and, and, and trusting 
people to, you know, do the, you know, to, to teach them and to not, my sister, you know, she, her, my niece has, you know, is, spe is special needs and she, she doesn't, she doesn't often say everything or is able to articulate everything. My sister has a huge fear and she's, and, and she's 18 mm -hmm. already. Y parece una mujercita y tiene un cuerpecito y tú la ves and she's like, you know, pero como tú la llevas a la iglesia y le da, and, and then, you know, try to teach them to be independent. My sister wants to encourage, because Ashley wants to be independent mm -hmm. and she wants to do things like other children and she doesn't want her mother sitting next to her. Pero después, ¿cómo, ¿cómo tú lo haces sabiendo todo lo que tú has leído, everything that, you know, that's in the news? Like, I don't know, like, how do you, Marcy? I honestly, um, for Aiden has been challenging because Aiden is, this is something also, because I, I read an article about, um, I went to Autism Speaks and I searched religion and children with special needs, right? Um, and basically, what, when I'm just paraphrasing what they said, is like one of the most challenging aspects for kids with um autism is that they're very abstract so if they read Amelia Bedelia stubbed her toe or like you know some kind of idiom right they're not going to necessarily understand that it's referring to something else and that's a lot of what the, the the bible says right it might say something literal you know on paper but the interpretation is different this is why there's so many different christian religions right I use the same Bible, but their interpretation of what is written in the text is completely different. So how am I going to subject my child who has a difficulty grasping certain aspects of communication, you know, and is very abstract um, to understand what they really mean? Not only that, but exactly like your sister, my son doesn't always necessarily tell me what happens you know, in, in, in school, like he'll script and he'll tell me different things, but he won't tell me like such and such says something mean to me or such and such did this to me. You know, I've taught him, you can only touch your own body. If anybody touches your body, you need to tell mommy like ASAP. But even then I, I, I can't trust that he's actually going to tell me that. And I'm not going to say that every person in the church is a pedophile, right? But the possibility is there just like leaving him anywhere with a sitter with whoever it's just i i i honestly i feel like your sister i'm very fearful and i feel like i i don't want to put my kid in the middle of something like that which is why you know i'll te i've taught him to pray and how to be good on his own like i don't want to put the fear and i also don't want to subject him to people that might have questionable standards right and and you know we're talking about the Catholic religion because that's the religion that we know that we grew up in. Um, but there's so many other religions out there that you're like, what? Like when you hear about Pentecostals, um, my landlords are actually Pentecostals um, and they're really nice people, but they're very judgy. Um, you know, I hope they never listen to this episode. <laughs> Or you will be evicted. <laughs> but they're very, they're very, you know, like sometimes I'll sit there with uh, the wife and uh, she'll go, I mean, she gives me the tea on the neighborhood and I'm like, okay. And, and a part of me wants to know the tea because I want to know <laughs> what's going on. And, and I don't, let me, and, and a little bit about that. I'm not totally against nosy people in your neighborhood because nosy people sometimes can save your life. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not totally and completely against nosy people in the neighborhood, but holy crap, she'll go in and she'll just make up these things. And I'm like, mm, but do you know that to be true, you know, yeah. or are you just speculating? But anyways, but on my way, so I, I lived in Vegas for a while. And when I moved back, I drove back to New York, longest drive of my life for four days. And on my drive back, we drove through Mississippi holy crap so every billboard was if you are not if you don't have god in your life you will burn in hell the next one if you don't go to church something will happen to you i mean there were crosses everywhere it was damn near scary and it shouldn't have been right because you're not supposed to think that church or god is scary but i was like where are we where are we? And a lot of them were like Baptist church, like the Baptist and this and the that. And if you've seen religion in the down South, 
those religions are scary. Those religions, they're like, they're the ones that are still like burning people. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. They're going to come for me. <laughs> but those are the religions that they're like the ones that really outcast people. Like, oh, you're not a part of this religion? No. Then you're a sinner and you're going to burn in hell. And everyone looks at them and judges them just because they don't want to be a part of that religion. And I'm talking about like rural, like yeah. small little, you know, these towns that only have a population 600. That's what I'm talking about. Like those small where the where the sheriff and the judge and everybody is related. Um, There's just one person. Yeah, it's just it's just one person. Like exactly. you go you go to the library and it's like. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the sheriff. I'm, you know, and he, that person owns the whole little town. I'm talking about those little really backward places. Um, those people are like really like hard on religion and they're like, oh my God, it's scary. Those are the people, I don't know what religion it is that they take the snakes and they bite the heads off and they put them oh, around and they're like, I've seen those in, mm -hmm. I've seen them in, in, on, on TV, like in movies. I, I didn't know that was a thing. No, that's a thing. It's a real thing. It's a thing, and it's deep down. And I've never even heard. Oh, of it. what? Oh, I will oh, wait, send you so guys. So they're saying they, the, 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 from what I saw in the movie, it was like the person goes into this tub with snakes, and if you believe in yeah. Jesus and you're saved, you the snakes won't bite you. They won't bite and you. And it's like rattlesnakes. Get the it's rattlesnakes. With that bullshit. Yeah. No, like that's an actual. That's an actual thing that really happens. And I'm like, and they have the Bible. And I'm like, where in the Bible does it say that? Mm -hmm. Where? Just like the Quran doesn't Nowhere. say in the Quran, it doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that if you kill infidels, that you're going to get whatever many virgins when you die. That doesn't right. say anything. That's nothing in the Quran. Because the thing that was not, what's okay, God is not scary, right? The biblical texts are not necessarily scary, except for the revelations and some other stories in the Bible. But the biblical text is not scary, right? Mm -hmm. It's the extremists. You know, those heavy Christians, those, those you know, Al-Qaeda and all these other people that are like, really like take one concept that somebody believes is based on religion and kind of just go to town with that one thing. That's right. what's scary. Because uh, these people do all these crazy things like, you know, Salem witch trials. Uh, the uh, what is it when the church came? Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition. All these things they are happening in the name of God, which is really, right. really what like, which I don't understand. And to me, uh, yeah, and and the thing is that you know, if if the church, because what an individual does should not be a, a, a reflection of the complete religion, right? But the fact that, and I'm going to go back to like my point of contention. First of all, I don't like the brainwashing and I don't like the fear mongering. Okay. But the pedophilia within the church and the cover up, you know, the targeting of mm -hmm. helpless, defenseless children to me is just right. like what blows my mind. Like to me, because mm -hmm. as adults, we can make a decision, we can agree or disagree or whatever, but you know, we give these, we give priests, Th this power where we're calling them father like you know like to a child what the symbol of a father mm -hmm. is like how prominent like that to you is superman like and then this person is the mouthpiece for god like add that to it you know so this power that you've given should be given with like responsibility like and i know that they go to monasteries and they go but like you have to do like psychological evaluations and like monitoring right. of these priests like you know the report that just that they came out earlier this month um it, it's a it's a report that came out uh in in france where 30 through over three hundred thousand children have been abused in france since the 19, I think it's like since the 1950s. It's disgusting. By 3,000, by 3,000 priests. How many kids were each one of these priests molesting? And the thing is that all the church did was move them around, move them around, put them away for a little bit and then move them around. Like the teachers that go into the rubber room. Mm -hmm. Like, it, they, don't like get, no. they don't get fired. No, 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 no. They don't get fired. No, no. Yeah, and it's just like, how 
you know, and and I was listening to uh, you know this report, and they were saying that you know they're not prosecuted the way that we are mm-hmm. because they're higher beings than we. Like I don't think a one person made out of flesh, made que caga y me y hace toda la vaina que yo hago, should be exempt from any you know from prosecution. So, but what they were saying is that it first has to be acknowledged as a sin. Mm-hmm for the church and for churchgoers to like go. So it first has to be like acknowledged that this is a sin, but the fact that the church will not, they won't accept responsibility. You know why? Because they don't want to be sued because to them, money is important. They're going to, you know, and you know how much money they have coffers for just to pay people off. Like, shut up, shut up, shut up. So it's like, how can you, how can you preach love, compassion, all of these things, but then at night, you're, you're, you're molesting children. You're taking them. I, I was listening to this podcast about this, um, you know, and, and this was in Ireland, like this poor town, the, the, the parents, the people were old, were, were poor and they were very, very, you know, the Irish are very Catholic. And so, you know, to them having, um, a priest visit their house, is like an honor. Mm-hmm. Like they take out the, the, their best China and give it to the, you know, and, and give the, the priest the best food and whatever. And there was this father that molested almost all the children in this little town. And the kids were all afraid of telling, of telling their parents. They wouldn't tell the parents. And the priest would, like, while the parents were in the kitchen cooking, he would go upstairs and, and molest brothers, siblings, uh, cousins, all the kids there. Oh my and God. It, it was discovered because the, the 13-year-old boy one of the kids that went and the, and the, the parents would work really hard to be able to send the children to uh, Catholic schools. So they would pay and, you know, and to them it was prestigious to go. But all of the principals in the three schools in that little town were all pedophiles and they were all in on it. And so it was discovered because one day the 13 year old came home. And the mother had noticed that after he had, they had done a trip, a church trip to the beach and the priest took all the boys to the beach and whatever. And, and the son had been like really quiet and whatever. And the 13 year old uh, came home and he went upstairs to his room and whatever. And the mom was in the kitchen, whatever. The sister goes into his room to get like a like a, an eraser. And the little boy was hanging from his door by his. His, he wrapped his tie around his neck and and hanged himself and the sister found him and the mother and the sister started screaming the mother came upstairs and they all you know she called the priest that's the first person she thought of calling because you know you're not supposed to take your life and all that stuff so the priest comes but the priest comes but so come all the principals from all the schools and they're all, they're all in a huddle and she's like why are the principals here like what why are they like what's going on and all they cared about was did he leave a note did he leave a letter did he leave and then these same priests changed the story to oh he was playing with his brother and his tie got caught and it was an accident and like they made up I was listening to this and I'm like knowing this like knowing like that this happens and then his best friend wound up killing himself also and then his other friend became a priest and when he went to the monastery at 18 he was being now raped by all of the elders there it's just like it's too much it's too much like to me i know that not everybody is like that and that's not you know chance chances may be that it doesn't but i'm not gonna take the chance not with my kid no not gonna take the chance and and the thing also so we're i'm gonna be off topics but the Bible we know today was not what the stories that were passed down. First of all, have you ever paid telephone? Yes. Yes. So, you know, the original message always gets distorted by the end, the last person that gets interpreted. So before the Bible was written down, it was spoken. It was ri- it was said. Right. And then finally, when um, there was a Emperor Constantine. Right. Constantine right. asked everybody to start writing down all the all the all the religious stories. Right. So he there was a, him and a team of people decided which books went into the Bible. So there was a lot of stuff that was left out. Right. That's an, that's one yeah. thing. And then right. um, that always made me question about like besides the fact of all the stuff going on in the church that also made me question um, 
religion in general. And then I don't know if you guys ever read any of the books by Dan Brown. Yes. I have not. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I love the Dan Da Vinci Brown. Code, mm-hmm. Angels and Demons. Okay. The well, I love Angels and Demons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the movies, but the if movies, you read right. the books, if you read the books, there's a lot of truth in the things. Like he actually did research to write those books, and he talks about a lot of the corruption and the things that go on in the mm-hmm. church, like the stuff that you were talking about about the sacrifices, and he talks right. about a lot of the other things and how they have so much money they cover up things, and people never know. And another thing I wanted to touch on before we end, um, my, my, I had a great uncle, his name was, um, Dio Sindico. Sindico was a very... Wait, was that his name? Yeah, Sindico. Was that really his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sindico. <laughs> Dio Sindico. So Dio Sindico was always like, um, it was kind of like your dad, Suli, very questioning. And he would always say, eso padre, son unos ratreros. I was like, mm-hmm. Dio, como te dice eso? And he was like, no, porque mire, esta cosa del diezmo, de que, que tú le tienes que dar 10% de lo que tú te ganas a la iglesia, es un robo. Y eso rastreo ya se estaba haciendo nada. Digo yo, tío, pero por Dios. Dice, porque te ve la gente pobre, sobrina. Te ve la gente pobre. La gente pobre puede sacar dos racimos de plátano de la finca de ellos. Y cogen el más chiquito y manden el más grande para la iglesia. Y tú ves todos esos padres montados en jipeta que no lo tienen la gente de este pueblo con los cuartos de la gente. And eso es grande, señores. That's a, that's a big thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're imposing a tariff to be able to be part of this church, right? right? And you're making so much money that you have money to pay people off or to make them go away. Mm-hmm. Right. Like the government. Mm-hmm. Well, look at Joel Osteen. So I actually like Joel Osteen. There were times on Sundays that I would sit and I would, excuse me, and I would listen to what he was preaching. And I was like, okay, this is good. I feel good. I feel good. I feel great. And then the hurricane happened and people had nowhere to live. And he was just like, no, you guys are not coming into my church. I will have the the very church that people were giving you money for the people, the church that the people own, because without the people you would not have, you're not going to allow them to stay there. And his excuse was like, oh, there was some flooding or it wasn't suitable. Are you kidding me? Bullshit. Are you kidding me? So once that happened, I canceled him. I fucking canceled him. I was like, how dare you? The amount of tax breaks? How dare you do that to the people? The very people that go every Sunday and fill up your church and give you money and worship your every word. You showed your true side right there. And I was just like, never again, never again. So, and why is it, why are you living, why are you living this lavish life? I don't understand that. You know, I don't understand that. You know, when I see people like mother Teresa, I'm like, there's a true godly woman. Mm -hmm. This woman was walking amongst the poor, the sick. She had no riches. She probably wore the same clothing every day. But she was walking around and she was genuinely trying to help these people with the word of God, right? Because she didn't have any money. It wasn't like she was, Mm -hmm. you know, helping these people out monetarily. But that to me, that's what religion should be about. You know, for you to pray over someone and be godly in that way. To bring it back in, though, because we're almost Mm -hmm. ending. We're not saying we're, you know, don't go to church. Don't do this. You know, we're just, you know, people that are questioning. And for those of you that have kids with special needs and do want to introduce religion to them, there's a bunch of resources on Autism Speaks. Um, There's even resources for churches, um, clergy that want to, you know, help the congregation, you know, understand people with special needs and be less judgmental. Um, I'll put that in the show notes. But I want to thank everyone for coming to Comadre Time and being part of our conversation. Um, as always, if you want to send me a Comadre Gram, you can hit me up on IG or send me an email at comadreando at ESCthenetwork.com. And if you want to reach Maria and Suli, ladies, you want to drop your handles? Um, sure, you can you can reach us at El Salon Chronicles on IG, um, on you know El Salon Chronicles uh, 
at gmail.com and we have right. Salon Chronicles also at ESC the network and um, what else are they? Oh, we're on Twitter and Facebook also you know, so we're, we're on everything if you pretty much but if you if you, you yeah I mean if you go I, I exactly exactly but I think the best way to, to, to get in contact with us would be through our uh, website because it has Yes. Every single way to get in contact with us. Just go to our website. All right. Yes. But wait a second. I don't want us to end without um, acknowledging. Marcy, you did great for your first episode. Yes. This Thank you. Really awesome. <laughs> you so I'm so proud. I feel like a proud mama. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Welcome very good. to the podcasting world. I know. I mean, it was a heavy one, but yes, girl. It was good. I love it. Thank Welcome. you, ladies. Yay. <laughs> so with that... Uh, Tune in if this podcast is of uh, use to you or you think it would be of use to anybody else. Please send them the referral to join us and uh, expect many more episodes to come. Thank you for coming to Comadre Time. Bye. 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 <laughs>